Private Hudson's journey and the sequence of events leading the squad of Colonial Marines' mission on LV-426 to grief is an engaging roller coaster ride of emotions. The character begins as the self-proclaimed ultimate badass with an extremely cocky nature and overconfidence in the abilities of the artillery that the Marine Corps supplies. But when the situation turns sour, he makes sure to let everybody know how he feels about it and basically enters panic mode. It's Hudson's unfiltered rawness that may be the key to the character's appeal. While others in the group of survivors keep calm and reserved, Hudson makes a point to express the unspoken fear and anxiety of the group. I'm sure we'd all like to believe that if we were in the same situation, we'd keep a calm, cool, brave attitude about things, but I think Hudson may just be a lot more relatable than we'd like to admit. Still though, when the worst came to worst, he undoubtedly steps up and has his fair share of heroic moments, like when he saves Newt by obliterating the facehugger that threatens to attack her. And during the Operation Center attack, he takes out more than his fair share of bugs in a blaze of glory and foul language before finally succumbing to a sneak attack from beneath the floor panels. This moment has led to a fair amount of speculation as to how and when Hudson ultimately met his fate. Was he killed on the spot by the Xenomorph attack below, or, as it was revealed with Burke, was he incapacitated and brought to the alien hive where he would serve as another host for an alien drone in the Queen's army? The official novelization by Alan Dean Foster provides some further insights and details into the chaos that took place in the Operation Center attack, and the moments leading up to Hudson's last stand. In operations, Hicks looked up in time to fire at a leaping outline, the force of the pulse shell hurling his assailant backward into a blazing cabinet. By this time, the combined efforts of the flamethrowers had activated the control system and the overhead sprinkler jets deluged the room. Water cascaded around the corporal drenched the other soldiers. Some of it penetrated the central colony computer, ruining it for future use, but at least it didn't pull up around their legs. By now, there are enough acid holes to drain it off. The fire siren wailed mindlessly, making it difficult for the combatants to hear each other and rendering any thought of unified tactics impossible. Hudson was screaming at the top of his lungs, his shrill tone audible under the siren's moan. Let's go, let's go. Medical, Hicks yelled to him. He gestured frantically as he retreated towards the corridor. Come on. As the contact turned towards him, the floor panels erupted under his feet. Clawed arms seized him powerful triple fingers locking around his ankles and dragging him down. Another towering shape fell on him from behind, and he was gone in seconds, swallowed by the subfloor crawlway. Hicks let loose a rapid-fire burst in the direction of the cavity, hoping he got the Comtech as well as his abductors, then turned and ran. This passage in the novel strongly suggests that Hicks, while unable to save Hudson from being pulled into the floors below, may have at least been able to serve out a mercy kill before he was either killed by an alien or transported to the Hive for an even worse fate. With all the chaos and confusion though, it's not entirely clear if Hicks actually accomplished this. Considering the bullets blazing in multiple directions with xenomorph corpses spraying their acidic blood and burning holes through the floor, it is a good possibility that Hudson was killed during this attack and met his fate right then and there in the operations center. If we go by the events of Aliens Colonial Marines, however, a sad end to Hudson's story is revealed. Though the atmosphere processor explosion wiped out the colony, the hive appears to be preserved, and as Corporal Winters investigates the area, he observes a cocooned corpse attached to the wall, stating, That's a Marine. Must have been from the Sulaco. Unmistakably, the corpse belongs to Hudson, apparently having been successfully transported to the hive, implanted with an embryo, and had suffered the horrific birth of the chestburster. Though a sad end to a well-liked character, a consoling footnote can be found in the Weyland yutani report which reveals Hudson was posthumously decorated for gallantry under fire for his actions on LV-426. So do you go by what was revealed in Aliens Colonial Marines, or do you more just consider it kind of an easter egg, and is it more likely that he died in operations? Let me know what you think. And just for fun, share with me your favorite Hudson moments in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you about the ultimate badass. And as always, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, please hit the like button. That's always appreciated. And be sure to subscribe for more alien theories. If there's an alien universe topic you'd like to see covered, please let me know in the comments below. You can follow alien underscore theory on Twitter and alien theory YT on Facebook for more. And until next time, this is Alien Theory, signing off.